Hey guys, what's up? I'm Patrick of Coaster Fanatics, and today I'm bringing you my list of the top 10 wood coasters. Just like my steel coaster list yesterday, this list takes in consideration every wooden roller coaster I've ever been on. I will be making a video like this every year at the beginning of the season. Keep in mind I will be riding somewhere around 200 new coasters this summer, so next year's list may look very different. Kicking off this list in the number 10 spot, I have Thunderhead at Dollywood. One of two GCIs on this list. So I'm a huge fan of GCI. They are right up there with RMC in my book. There are many people who say Thunderhead is the best GCI. I personally disagree. It's still a great ride though. It features the signature GCI curve drop and has the amazing Millennium Flyer trains. Thunderhead has excellent transitions. They are almost maverick like. Just one element after another. You just fly through these overbank turns and small airtime hills that really eject you out of your seat. Of course, Thunderhead was the first ever coaster to feature a station flyby. It was the first and still the best in my opinion. The train just flies through overhead and is so cool to watch while you're waiting in the station. It is truly amazing how good GCI coasters are considering they are only 100 feet tall with a top speed of around 50 miles per hour. I will say I was slightly underwhelmed when I rode Thunderhead, probably because I had just got off a lightning rod. I'm looking forward to riding it again sometime to see if it climbs up a few spots on this list. Next in the number 9 spot I have the Hoosier Hurricane, one of two CCI coasters on this list. I consider this to be a very underrated coaster. I've always loved the atmosphere of a roller coaster that is on a boardwalk or a beach. The Hoosier Hurricane achieves that and then some. I love the way this coaster is built on the edge of the boardwalk. In fact, several of the drops dive right into Schaefer Lake. There just aren't that many coasters out there that are built on natural water like that. One of the other cool things about this coaster is that it is shoehorned into the park. It shares some of its structure with the Cornball Express and passes pretty close to a lot of the other rides on the boardwalk. It's really an impressive piece of engineering. The Hoosier Hurricane actually has some good airtime too. There are some nice moments in the beginning of the ride, as well as on the final airtime hills, which also have a few head chopper elements. Overall, it's a good coaster and I highly recommend it. Ranking in the number 8 spot, I have the American Eagle, the lone intimate on this list, and the only racing coaster. So some of you may be scratching your heads with this one, which I could understand, but the American Eagle is more of a sentimental pick, because it was the first major roller coaster I ever rode. This is just a classic at Six Flags Great America. Just another really impressive piece of engineering. The helix in the middle of the ride is huge and one of the more iconic features of the entire park. I mean that helix is the first thing you see driving down the highway to visit Great America. Ride quality has started to get worse over the years. It's starting to get very rough, especially in the helix. What also sucks is that they don't race it as much anymore for some reason. I mean, it hasn't raced when I've been at the park since like 2004. Still, it's a special roller coaster for me and it's still a fun ride even in the condition it's in today. I still always look forward to riding it every time I visit Six Flags Great America. Sitting in the number 7 spot, I have The Voyage, one of two Gravity Group coasters on this list. Wow, what a massive roller coaster this is. The Voyage looks like a very intimidating ride from the ground. I mean, that lift hill is huge. It looks almost as tall as a hyper coaster, but in reality it's only about 160 feet tall. I'm a big fan of long rides, especially on wooden roller coasters, and the Voyage easily delivers on that. The Voyage has excellent airtime, especially in the first few hills that dive into the underground tunnels. The Spaghetti Bowl section is the best part of the ride. It features many high speed overbank turns and small airtime hills. This section is very GCI-like as it has lots of rapid transitions. From there you go through the mid-course brake run and then drop into another tunnel which has the Voyage's signature element which is the triple down. The element has great airtime and is one of the best parts of the ride. The one thing that I dislike about the Voyage is that it uses Philadelphia toboggan trains. I think it would be awesome if they added the newer style of Gravity Group trains. It would really improve ride quality and just be overall a great upgrade to the Voyage. It still is a great coaster and definitely one of the best I've ever been on. I really hope to get a night ride on it someday. I heard it's pretty good. Next in the number 6 spot I have another Gravity Group coaster, Hades 360. This one was one of my favorite roller coasters I rode last year. 
It's just such a fun and unique roller coaster. I mean, how many roller coasters out there have an underground tunnel that spans the entire length of the parking lot? Hades 360 is one of the first modern wooden roller coasters to go upside down with its 360 degree roll. I mean they did such an amazing job with how they designed it. You shoot out of the tunnel right into the barrel roll which connects right into an overbank turn. You then hit a nice airtime hill and dive right back into the tunnel. The tunnel itself is great. It features lots of little airtime hills that are very thrilling. The trains on Hades 360 are awesome and very unique. The front is molded to look like Hades face and it looks great. I've heard a lot of people say that this coaster is rough and I must say I totally disagree. I mean it's not smooth but it does have the normal roughness that most wooden roller coasters have. It's a very underrated roller coaster in my opinion and I wish more people would take the trip up to Wisconsin to ride it. I really hope to get a night ride on it someday. Alright now for my top 5. Ranking in the number 5 spot I have Goliath. One of two RMCs in my top five. This is an excellent roller coaster, you guys. It is pretty short and compact, but is very thrilling. Goliath has the best two inversions I've ever seen on an RMC. The first is a dive loop that is similar to the ones found on B&M coasters, except obviously Goliath is made of wood. What makes Goliath so special is the second inversion, which is the zero gravity stall. Such an amazing element, you guys, and no doubt my favorite inversion on any roller coaster I've ever been on. Goliath broke three records when it opened, two in which it still holds. The first is the longest drop at 180 feet, and the second is the steepest drop at 85 degrees. The trains look awesome and are very detailed. They have a very cool medieval look that really stands out. Goliath is no doubt one of RMC's best creations and is overall an amazing ride. Sitting in the number 4 spot I have Shivering Timbers, my favorite roller coaster built by Custom Coasters International. This is another one of my favorite coasters I got to ride last year. I was really looking forward to riding this one and it turned out to be fantastic. Shivering Timbers is such a great coaster and it's a shame that more people don't get to ride it. This thing is an airtime machine. It's such a simple design. I mean it's just countless airtime hills, a turnaround, and a giant helix. Even though it's simple, it's executed very well. There is just endless airtime on this thing, and the helix is pretty intense and one of the more thrilling parts of the ride. I'm very happy I got to ride it last year because they recently removed its signature element, which is the trick track. I think it was an awesome element and something that made the ride even more unique. Unfortunately, they took it out and replaced it with another airtime hill. I guess a lot of people complain that it was rough. I strongly disagree. Michigan's Adventure doesn't have much to be proud about, but Shivering Timbers is no doubt the gem in their lineup. So many people won't take the time to visit Michigan's Adventure. I say give it a chance. Shivering Timbers alone is worth it. So the coaster in the number 3 spot is one you guys probably won't expect. And that's the Beast. So I know you guys have heard me say in many videos that the Beast is my number 1 wood coaster. When I made this list I thought to myself, if my top 5 were all sitting right next to each other, in what order would I ride them? After I really thought about it, the Beast came in third place. But still you guys, I really do love this roller coaster. It is just such an impressive piece of engineering. I mean the Beast opened in 1979. It was the tallest, longest, and fastest wooden roller coaster in the world. It was just so ahead of its time. Today it is still the longest wooden roller coaster in the world. With a track length of 7,359 feet, it has a ride time of over 4 minutes, and it's awesome. The Beast isn't known for its crazy elements or strong airtime moments. Instead, it makes up for it with its excellent forest ride. I mean, there just isn't another coaster I've been on that takes you that far away from the rest of the park like the Beast does. You almost forget that you're even at a theme park when you're on it. Of course, by far the best element on the Beast is the final drop and the helix. It is one of my favorite elements on any wooden coaster. I love how the drop banks you to the side as you enter the helix. It's by far the most intense part of the ride and is overall such an amazing element. And to think when the beast first opened it had no trim brakes. Imagine how crazy that had to be. Of course what the beast is really known for is its night ride. It is just such a good time flying through that forest in the darkness. It's an iconic roller coaster in my eyes that other enthusiasts kinda hate on, but I don't care. Roller coasters are not all about the elements and the airtime. 
It's about the overall ride experience, and the Beast gets an A-plus in my book. Ranking in the number two spot, I have Renegade, my favorite GCI. I've said this many times, Renegade is the most underrated roller coaster I've ever been on. It is an absolute crime that this coaster isn't in the Amusement Today Top 50 Wood Coasters. I love Renegade and I'm always going to encourage you guys to drive up to Valley Fair and ride this thing. It features this awesome S-shaped drop that you really don't see on many other roller coasters. After the drop it is just pure awesomeness. Renegade has amazing transitions and ejector airtime that rivals my number one wood coaster. I mean you just fly over these airtime hills right into the overbank turns and then of course it has the station flyby similar to Thunderhead. Even though it's kind of a short ride, it's such a fantastic coaster that I wish more people took the time to ride. As much as I love Renegade, there is still one coaster I like slightly better. And that's Lightning Rod at Dollywood. So I know this one has received mixed reviews mostly because of the downtime. But those who have rode it know how great this coaster really is. Lightning Rod is RMC's best coaster to date. I don't think there's any doubt about that. This coaster is so cool to watch from the ground. People watch this thing launch up that hill and disappear over the other side. It gives Lightning Rod a mysterious element because most of it is hidden. The only way to find out what's on the other side is to ride it. The launch is amazing. You aren't going to travel 45 miles per hour on any other lift hill in the world. Once you are over the hill you are in for a wild ride. The ride features several overbank turns and several awesome snapback elements where the train banks from one side to the other rapidly. The best element on Lightning Rod is the quadruple down. It is an amazing element that everyone needs to experience because it gives some of the best ejector airtime found on any roller coaster. The trains on Lightning Rod are some of the best ever made. They look like a hot rod car and are pretty much perfect in my opinion. It's going to be hard to beat Lightning Rod so I expect it to be my number one wood coaster for many years to come. So there you have it you guys, that was my top 10 wood roller coaster list. So what do you guys think? Please leave your thoughts in the comment section and share your top 10 wood coaster list. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please smash that like button. Do leave your thoughts in the comment section, and if you're new around here, please subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, you guys. Have a good one. I'll catch you all on the next video very, very soon.